Last summer, I added a lean-to extension off an 18-foot by 18-foot shed that I'd like to use as a woodworking shop. The extension was added to store lumber and supplies that I don't want taking up my limited floor space in the wood shop. This future woodworking shop needs a lot of work to make it functional. On the south side, there's a man door, and on the west side, a single garage door. Before I can do much in this transformation, I have to do something about the main beam that supports the rafters. It has a noticeable sag that I think is around an inch over 18 feet. I want to use the attic of this space for some storage, and this beam will need to carry that weight, plus the weight of insulation and a ceiling in this shop. I decided to add a support column at the midpoint of the beam, and this will allow me to first straighten it and remove the sag, and then to carry the additional loads of the new ceiling and the attic storage. I didn't think the existing poured concrete floor would carry this point load without cracking, and I didn't want to take that chance, so I would need to pour a new footing below the midpoint of the beam. I roughly marked a 16 inch square on the floor and rented a dry concrete saw and vacuum to make the cuts. The well for our house is very close to where I'd be cutting, so I also didn't want to use a wet saw and have the runoff from it contaminating our drinking water. And I wasn't too concerned about a bit of dust, so renting the dry concrete saw just made more sense. I made cuts around the perimeter, then a few cuts in the middle. Then I could break up these pieces with a hammer. After I cleared the square of concrete, I cut back the plastic and dug down about a foot deep. I gotta say, cutting concrete with a saw is strangely satisfying. If I was to do this again, I would just cut around an inch deeper so breaking the pieces with a hammer would have been easier. I can now pour concrete into this hole. My mix was a bit runnier than usual, so I was sure to fill any voids in the hole I dug. There was some rough fill used below the slab with a few old bricks and concrete chunks, so I didn't start with a clean and completely clear hole. Adding some rebar as I go. It took a few bags to fill this. I felt it wasn't a big job and not enough to bother setting up my mixer. So I just mix the concrete by hand in a wheelbarrow. I settled the wet concrete each time before I added another batch and I overfilled the last bit, then let it sit for a while before screeing the top level with a 2x4. After troweling, I covered the concrete with plastic and kept it wet for three weeks while it cured. I'll be making a full series of videos on turning this shed into a workshop, so subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hit that bell button so you'll be notified when I post the next part of the series. I marked the center of the span and attached a plumb bob to a screw at that point. Then I can find and mark the corresponding point on the newly poured footing. I set the base plate in position and transfer the hole locations to the concrete. This plate is a bit larger than the one that comes with the steel post. and I'll drill these holes with a concrete bit. Some tape on the bit lets me know when I'm deep enough for my anchor bolts.
There's a smaller plate that I'll attach to the underside of the beam, and I'll use some washers and wood screws for this. I really like the structural GRK screws, and I'm using them more and more in my projects. They're a bit more expensive for sure, but they're much higher quality. I'll be using one of the steel adjustable support columns that's available from almost all building supply stores. It says that they can be used for temporary or permanent supports. For what I'm doing here, I think it's more than adequate. These columns have two pipes that fit together and two bolts run through indexed holes, so the column can be adjusted to whatever height you need. Now I'll tap the concrete anchor bolts into the holes. They have a sleeve on their ends that wedges into the hole when the nut is tightened. I didn't notice that I had two different lengths of anchor bolts until I was hammering them in, and if it's a problem I'll cut the long ones down later. I'll attach a string line to the north and south wall using a block of wood on either side. This string line will be pulled tight along the bottom edge of the beam. I know there's other ways to fix this sagging beam, and I could have replaced it with a steel I-beam or an engineered laminated wood beam, but given the high prices of all building materials right now, I went with what I thought would be the cheapest option. I know that it's not ideal to have a post in the middle of the shop, but I think I can work with that. And this column might help with securing dust vacuum ductwork over any tool centered in the floor space. This string line will be my reference when I get to straightening the beam. The column has a threaded bolt at the top, and the bottom of the post sits over a bump on the base plate. At the top, the bolt has a narrow end that fits into a hole on the plate attached to the beam. I used a wrench to turn the bolt and apply the load. I took around a half inch of sag out of the beam with only a few turns. And it didn't take much force to do this. At least it didn't feel that way. The instructions on the column state that it is not to be used as a lifting device. So if I felt the load was too much, then I would use a separate post and a bottle or screw jack to lift the beam first. If I speed up the section where I first turned the bolt, it's easier to see how much the beam moved. Over the next few days, I came back several times and gave the screw a turn until the beam was straight. In the next video, I'll install a retractable attic ladder, then start insulating the ceiling and walls. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.